Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you, men and brethren, my friends, all over the world. May the good Lord bless you as you give me attention, audience, today in Jesus' name. I come your way again today with Aranda on broadcasting that has to do with analysis. And by His grace, today I want to present to us the people-oriented God. God is people-oriented. At the same time, God is also result-oriented God. But I'm dealing with today the issue of God's the people orientedness of God. Praise the Lord. Emphasis is mine. God is people oriented. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish or the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Praise the Lord. And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So God is people to God. This is the only true God. The God that created heavens and the earth. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant keeping God, is people oriented. Praise the Lord. And that's why he came, he came down looking for Adam. Yet, is he on the throne? Came down, enter the womb of Virgin Mary, and was born in a house of animal on a manger, looking for me, looking for you. Praise the Lord. God is people oriented. God is people oriented. Praise the Lord. So the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in a cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? The same way God today is calling men and women, Where are you? Rich or poor? educated or illiterate, uh, white or black, Jew or Gentile or Greek, is calling everybody, is looking for you because God is people oriented. God loves you, God cares for you. He loves me, he cares for me. He loves me. I cannot say why he loves me. I cannot say why on Calvary tree he suffered for me. He lost me. I cannot say why. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is people-oriented God. It's people-oriented God. So, and uh, the today, the tomorrow, is still looking for you and I. It's still looking for you and I. Praise the Lord. The book of Luke chapter 9, because of his people, 
oriented nature of him. He have special love, he have a special place in his heart for mankind. He came to save man, not to destroy man. Luke chapter 9, verse 54, down to 56. And when they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, without that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did. Verse 55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For a son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another place. Because of these people oriented nature, they don't want to destroy man. He came to save man, not destroy man. He no, he not come to destroy man, but to save man. John chapter three verse eighteen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the little Son of God. Verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God is really dead. He loves you. He cares for you. Wherever you are, I want you to join me next time. I want to end here by his grace and mercy. Know it assuredly, telling that God is people there. God he loves you. He cares for you. Join me next time. As we proceed in Jesus' name, praise the Lord.